Welcome to another show reading, y'all. Uh, I noticed in the last reading, uh, I forgot to bring the singing bowl, and that's happened to me before, so I wanted to stress the importance of uh, just starting with the singing bowl. So I'll uh, I'll end up starting uh, all these tarot readings with a simple ask. Now, on my side, uh, I'm actually doing something to try to connect to your energy. Uh, so if there's something that you could do for me, and that is to hit the like, share, subscribe button, uh, possibly the comment if you choose to. Uh, that way you can help me, but also that way we can connect together. Uh, it's the physical thing that you can do on your side, if you get me. Uh, so with that, uh, I do as I should do, which is, number one, uh, I give you my permission to connect to me during this tarot reading. And uh, number two, uh, I ask you your permission to connect to you during this tarot reading. Like I say, it's a simple button push, which you can do on your side, but on my side, I ask you please. Thank you. You're a very firm person. Om Nam Ganapate Namaha. Om Nam Ganapate Namaha. So, on this side we have our logic cards as far as what you're thinking. On this side we have our uh, animal spirit cards as far as what you're feeling. Okay? Uh, these two boards represent your present and what you can feel. These two boards represent the veil and what you can't see through. And these two boards represent what you would see if you could see through the veil. Okay? So... I shuffle three times. I uh, utter uh, Lord Ganesha's mantra in order for him to remove all obstacles uh, and barriers between me and you so we may properly have this reading. Now, these cards, they get shuffled. Uh, they're meant to be read that way, that way, and that way. Okay? So they get shuffled that way, that way, and that way. Get me? All right. So. Let's be Om Nam Ganapate Namaha Om Nam Ganapate Namaha Om Nam Ganapate Namaha Slam my shuffle. Go over this side. Same thing, three times. So if they get shuffled sideways because they get better for it. Let's begin. Om Yam Ganapati Namaha. You're very fluid emotionally. Om Yam Ganapati Namaha. A matter of fact, obviously. Om Yam Ganapati Namaha. Fluid though, nonetheless. So as far as uh, what you're currently thinking and what you have in your current situation we have, and that is, so I brought my light over here this time, the way I can read these cards. I was in an auto accident when I six months old, so hard for me to read without a light. I know that might seem ridiculous to you, but that's the situation. Um, true blue in every aspect. So, uh, so like myself, um, you could be going through uh, kind of an emotional change. So, so here's what I mean. Um, <laughs> and I'll actually get this card up. That way we can uh, we can talk about it a little bit. Um, and what I mean here is, let me show you the right side up. Yeah. Um, so reason why I say you might be a little bit like me. Um, so I lived a life. Uh, I was dope queen for a period of time from the age of fourteen to nineteen. Please meet you. Uh, and, uh, the thing I say to you is, is that it was a long process, uh, I'm 36 now, but, uh, it was a long process kind of bringing myself back, you get me? And so, uh, I had to make this choice to better myself and to start actually giving a you-know-what about people, 
and how they felt because uh, it was easier to turn that part off and not worry about that. And in fact, I had to in order to be who I was at the time. Um, not proud of it, but I own it. Uh, be part of the tarot channel. It's, it's important. That's why I chose to start a tarot channel that way I could reach out to individuals who might resonate with me because I understand that. Uh, I understand. Okay, there, there's just a lot of people that don't resonate with us or with people who are a little scarred up, who might look a little beat up, but uh, we still give a damn. We still want to change and be good people, and we know we have the right to, and you do, brother, sister, you do. You have the right to love, you have the right to change, you have the right to all your dreams. Don't you let nobody say you're different. Alright? <clears throat> now, as far as what you're not seeing through, we have this card. Your predictions have and always will be true. So, let's have a conversation about life and death, okay? I want you to understand um, that from experience, and you can look at my previous content if you want to. Uh, I had a near-death experience. Uh, mine was different than a lot of what I hear because I remained outside of my body for a year and a half is what I estimate. I was in the same room uh, as my body. I recognized my body and I didn't like my body. Okay. And... Uh, I got to experience crossing over. I got to experience the black or the veil. But I call it the black uh, because it just is, okay? But uh, it gets the title of the black because not only is it just deep, okay? Um, but I call it the black because it is also conscious, okay? And when I was a little baby, it held me by the hand and it nurtured me and it took care of me. While I had to be in that space and so I could be back in my body, okay? The black is something we've all experienced. When I, when I die, die. Um, then I will experience the black again, except uh, this time I will experience death next to me. And uh, so will you. And no matter what form death comes in, it, it will be death. And uh, his or her job is to uh, walk you backwards through your life. So death is all gods uh, so much more than what is fathomable. Okay? They are multifaceted in ways that you cannot perceive beyond your perception twice. I know that for a fact. Um, but death has seen every perspective and witnessed every being as it walked backwards. You know? Now, I want to, I'm going to tell you about life real fast. This is something I haven't said yet on here, but, but, I, but I will. Uh, but I give it to you right here. Let's start reading real quick. I want you to stop. For just a second, I want you to consider something. I want you to consider, you know, it's going to be a little weird, bear with me. I want you to consider ants. I want you to consider roaches and flies and spiders. You might be thinking to yourself, what is this talking about? Well, I want, number one, for you to understand how fragile the it's strong, it's nature, but uh, how fragile the situation is that you currently live in. 
to see, uh, let's say tomorrow, some genius, of course, comes out with a chemical that is guaranteed to kill the common house fly. Okay. Might even get a Nobel Prize, right? Targets the house fly, specifically. Doesn't hurt nothing else. Everything, all EPA, all that stuff, doesn't bother nothing else. Just specifically targets the house fly, does its job. Okay? We give them that. So you kill off all the house flies. Okay? But when you do that, you're going to create an abundance of new jobs. You see, as disgusting as this is, the house fly regurgitates onto its food. And while you probably don't want to talk about it, uh, house fly takes care of uh, bile. We'll call it that. Okay? So all of a sudden, now there has to be a man to come into your backyard, to spray your backyard down with stomach acid. Because now you don't have the common house fly to do that for you. Uh, and I'm sure that sounds weird to you, but I want you to think about something. Now, the reason why I point out insects to start with is because if you put yourself empathetically into the life of what you might imagine, uh, a spider or a roach or a lizard or a well or a dolphin, okay, or a beautiful bird, what their perspective would have to be for the life that they have. Suddenly you come to realize that you can pretty well switch to Discovery Channel, National Geographic, and somehow, somewhere inside you, that uh, sounds strange, you can find a connection to anything that's on there, and I want to tell you why. See, the reason for human beings is uh, to be custodians, okay? What you don't realize is that, uh, as odd as this is going to sound, me, you, each and every other beautiful being, at one time was an ant. And I mean an ant. And uh, at one time was a lizard. And the perceptions and the lessons and the in the times that we were colonize, colonizing mice like a uh, like uh bees or like uh, like ants like termites okay uh we had to learn a certain perception or a certain perspective in order to get through that life it is i'm sure it sounds wild but if you think about what i'm saying you'll understand what i'm getting at okay so the human experience is actually based on you having already lived these lives as these creatures and your source job here is to make sure that those lives can be led so that spirits can be reborn. And they can start brand new, microbial, or, or however that actually works. And all the way up the food chain until the human become custodians themselves. Do you understand? Okay. So, reading I say that to you. Your predictions have and always will be true. And the reason I say that to you is because, uh, so sometimes we have to go through life lessons, okay, in order to learn this, this, how, this, how you evolved. I'm not talking any sort of bull crap about monkeys to human, any of that crap. Just, just throw that out of there, okay? At one time you were a monkey, but home is not. Homo sapien evolved from monkeys is that you spiritually were in the embodiment of a monkey at one point in time. You had to go through that in order to learn the perspectives and the things that you need to learn to eventually come here as a human being. I'm, I'm sure that sounds wild, but whatever. Okay? Um, you, uh, you also have to learn from having, and I know this is going to sound backwards. But having the correct, and it's going to sound backwards for the cards, I'm not too wish, we'll put it together. 
having the correct and wrong answer at the same time. So here's why I explain life and death to you, okay? Is both are needed. And when you die, you'll only be at 50% of your life because the human experience is not enough to be lived forward because you live forward with your ego and your bravado and your bullshit, okay? Uh, when you stop and walk backwards and have to see everybody else's perspective of you, when you walk backwards and you have to see what people really meant when they said what they said to you, and you have to confront that and you have to confront them. And whether those people are alive now or dead then, do you get me? Um, doesn't matter because at some point in time, time, death is beyond that, okay? Um, they will have to confront it too. So you, you will have the experience of these people. Do you understand? And so when you get done and you have your perspective at the end, these, these memories, this, this filtering down and this scene where your perspective was and where it left everybody at the end of it. It's not God that judges you, it's you that judges you. And the reason I say that is, is that as odd as this might sound, both good and bad, but not bad, life and death, okay? The other 50%, you have to go backwards, otherwise you wouldn't understand the human experience, you'd miss it all. You went through life cocky, or you went through life sassy, or you went through life thinking this, that, or the other. But you get to confront all that, you get to find the truth. As soon as you die, you're at 50% of your life, okay? And so what happens is, is that sometimes, even though our predictions haven't always will be true, and we're true blue in every aspect, sometimes we don't see through something. So, uh, you know, what comes to mind to me is like people that go to the thrift shop, and I went to the thrift shop, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but you find this item and you're like, that's it. That's the thing that somebody neglected. That's the thing that somebody put on a shelf or a closet and forgot about. And now it's mine, it's my treasure. Just takes a little bit of dusting. Just take a little bit of caring. Wow, look how, look how it looks now, right? Well, sometimes being truthful in every aspect makes it so that you can't see through the dust. Do you get me? Makes it so that you can't see through just the everyday crap, judgments and whatever, okay? And uh, as a result, you, you, you're right. You're right, you're always right. But you're, uh, you're cutting yourself out of that other 50% ahead of time. So, my friend, I say to you that when it comes to, um, now, now this is, this is my thing and I'm not trying to influence you. This is, this is my thing. This is how I live my life. Okay. See, my perspective of a man and how that's supposed to work is, is that God gave man enough blood to run one head at a time. You get me? And God knows that. So God gave man a heart. Okay. So a man is supposed to lead from his heart. A man's supposed to leave from his heart. He's supposed to sift his heart, see what his heart says, and then have the nuts to go out and do what it is that that God's put on his heart. That's what that's what a man is. Do you get me? And so I say to you, uh, what you call it? Um, there's nothing wrong with being true blue. Okay, but when when I sift my heart and my heart says something, I go for it with faith and I just I just do it. Okay, and if I didn't have faith and I didn't go with it when it comes to me, then I'd be stuck in this too. Okay, because you are right, you and you always will be. 
the second that you really honestly feel like you're going to stand there and look anybody in this world in the, in the eye and say, my logic is undeniable. Uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to be wrong, like in the moment up, right? And so if you weren't wrong in the moment of and you could see through the logic being undeniable, you would see... A letter that you will receive, act on it at once. So I, I've said before, uh, we don't, you know, we live in modern times, okay? So we have emails, we have everything, texts, all sorts of stuff. So now anything in letter form, as in text, okay, right, um, could technically be a letter in today's environment, do you understand? But it says that an email, that you, or, or an email, or maybe it's going to be an email, maybe that's, that's what we're talking about here. But the letter that you will receive, act on it at once. So, this says to me, not that this is going to be a scam letter, but that this will be a letter that you want to react to. This will be a letter that you want to uh, to respond to already. And this is saying, don't sleep on it. Get after it. Okay. Now... I think that you might have some hesitation because there's something I, I'm not trying to, there's no dogging you at all, period. But there's no dogging you for being true blue in every aspect and, and all that. But my debacle here is, is I really do feel like this, not goody two shoes, but the trying to live your life from the most honest and truthful perspective also stands to be that while you're trying to assert what is right and wrong in your own life, uh, you stand the chance of putting judgment into something and being wrong because you use judgment as opposed to your heart for what is right is wrong. What was right or wrong, you feel what I'm saying? And so uh, I feel like that blocks you or that comes up as some sort of uh, maybe detour, right? Uh, maybe an emotional roller coaster you don't need to go on because uh, truth be told, uh, a letter that you will receive act on it at once. Truth be told, if you act according to uh, true blue in every aspect, right? And... Um, you, uh, your predictions have and always will be true and choose not to trust things that you normally wouldn't trust because that's how your internal clock works, then uh, you stand the chance to reflect on this thing and realize this was actually what you wanted, okay? And that when you get this letter, whatever this letter is, you, you should act on it at once. It might be an actual letter. Somebody, I mean, like, somebody could actually be romantic in this world and write you an actual letter. It is, it's possible, right? Some people do it. Um, who knows? You know what I'm saying? But it says once you get it, you need to act on it and not question it very much. Um, is what I'm seeing on that. And then as far as where you are emotionally, where you where you feel you are emotionally right now. The beaver. Diligence, self-sufficiency, patience, motivation, progression, structure, uh, ingenuity, and experience. So 
So like me, my friend, uh, you're true blue in every aspect because you've already had the experience and went through the, the life lessons and the learnings. Okay. And so just like me, that means that, because uh, <laughs> I mean, I know I don't have all of them and I'm sure you know that you don't have all of them either, but um, what it tells me is that uh, the um, situation you stand in is not to be pompous, but the situation that you stand in is to I want to say judge something too quickly. So like, so there is some, like, so every one of us knows that we have a margin of error, right? And there's certain things that we're willing to take the chance on being wrong about. And there's certain things that we think our margin of error is too great or the risk is too high to take a chance on. And that's why I keep saying to you, uh, that might get in your way in this case because you need to act at once when you get this letter, whatever that is. Um, now, the thing that you can't see through, the thing that you can't get through is the dolphin. Playfulness, enjoyment, celebration, altruism, Harmony, joy, togetherness, care, love, and compassion. you is it better to play in your imagination with what could be okay or is it better to have what could be and I say this because your blockage is you're right. Which you're imagining with this person, obviously, is correct. Do you understand? Um, but sometimes it's easier to stay in the imagination and be worried about what might be and how wonderful it could be versus and, and I don't and it's not a lazy thing sometimes things are hard to face and I understand that but um it could be uh it could be blocking you because you already know that you're right okay now if you could see through being in your imagination and being playful, then you would see. Goat. Quick-wittedness, independence, uh, initiation, uh, opportunism, stability, affluence, ambition, and acquisition. So, the thing that you can't see through 
is your own playing in, in your own mind a fantasy and whatnot with this person. Um, but what you're going to miss out on in the meantime. So, while you're being true blue, okay, and while you're being always correct, okay, and while you're just absolutely loving the fact that you know that you're correct and you're playing all these things out in your fantasy and your imagination. You stand a chance of missing out on an opportunity. So I say to you, maybe you already received the letter, okay? And maybe you're just taking your sweet time, just sunbathing and doing whatever, I guess. Um, because you haven't acted, right? Now, if that's the case, the thing to tell you is it's fun. Right? You're right. You'll always be right. That's what that says. And, and cool. Right? Um, and you're true blue. So that means that you're a good person on the inside. That's, that's solid. Okay. And you've learned life lessons. So you're disciplined. Another solid. We're doing good so far. Okay. However, all that's going to get in your way. Because you, I, you've already received this letter, okay? And uh, you ain't did nothing about it. That's cool. Except for the person who gave you the letter, okay? So what might not be so clear to you now, I know that I've only really seen people ride donkeys, and I don't really know that I've ever seen anybody ride a goat. But I do know that I've seen people use goats as pack animals for, like, carrying goods or whatnot. But what you don't see is, okay, is uh, you might be a little roughed up, might be a little fuzzy, okay? You might have a little bit of a temperament. Alright. Goats kind of do. But, uh... He may be slow. But he's sure-footed. Okay? And if you want to sit there oogling and on, you can go right ahead. Um... But if you don't act, then as slow as the slow goat is, you bet your ass he's climbing, baby. And he's sure for it. Alright? And if you want to sit there and play in your little imagination and have your little fun little games as opposed to experiencing the real thing, that's cool. Right? However, uh, the only thing to tell you is, is that you're going to miss out. Pretty soon, this little goat ain't gonna be too high for you to reach. You get me? It look like he'll take you where he's going. If you act. If you don't, I hope you took a picture. You get me? Alright. 